The main difference between swimming in the pool and open water is when you're in a pool, you have the lane lines and you're swimming your own race. While swimming in the open water, your race is going to be dictated by the rest of the competitors that are around you. It's also dictated by Mother Nature. Haley Anderson, she started out strong, she's finishing strong. You have to have five different race plans. You know what I mean? You have to be ready for anything. Let's get some energy up and help out Jordan Wolomowski. In the pool, you don't really focus on any of that stuff, but in open water, that all like kind of factors into your race strategy. If you're in the ocean, it could be flat one day, and the next day it could be five foot waves. But instead of making it daunting, I think of it as exciting. You could never test us. Oh yeah, cause we're the best. We go. Obviously, I really want to do well in open water, and this is a big year for us. Um, it's qualifying for the Olympics. I think everyone's goal is to make the Olympics, and it's, it's pretty special when you get to do that and represent the United States. Ready, Hup. So the Olympic selection process is going to start uh, this May at our nationals in Miami. So May 3rd is the day of our 10K nationals. From that event, we'll select two men and two women to go to world championships to compete for their spots for the Olympic team. Our goal this year is to do something that no country has ever done, which is to place two men and two women in the top 10 at World Championships and finish the qualification process this July. 28-3, I like that lower body position. As soon as the starter gun goes off, you're, you're trying to win. I mean, you don't get up at six in the morning every single day to, to get second. You want to win, but so does everyone else, so you got to you know make sure you're working hard. I got into open water once I went to college and one of my coaches said I had a good stroke for open water and a good temperament and I was like, what does that even mean, good temperament? Mental toughness that you would see out of these athletes, but also the ability to withstand that for a long duration. It's not a 15 minute race where you just need to be mentally tough for that 15 minutes. It's physically demanding. It's a different breed of a distance swimmer. So I think that draws a certain type of athlete. Definitely say a milestone would be making the Olympic team in uh, 2015 at the World Championships and then again in the pool in 2016. That was always my goal to qualify in both and I didn't really realize that no one had competed in it at the same Olympics through the US, but someone told me that I was like, oh, it's cool. <laughs> I won the 500 free at NC2As my junior year, leading up to the 2012 Olympics, and so having that actually happen and all the hard work, it was nice. So the different distances that we work with with open water is the 10K, which is the Olympic distance. We also have a 5K and a 25K. Longest distance competition in the pool is a 1500 meter freestyle. I have a time of a 10K race, just under two hours. The 5K typically lasts just under an hour. Um, longest race in the pool is 16 minutes. How many summers you have in a pool race? Just eight, usually. <laughs> so at World Championships, we'll have close to about 80 men, 80 women in the 10K race. There are zero lanes in open water. Pool temperature is right around 80 degrees. Average temperature in open water, I don't know, 70? With an open water swim, we can have a temperature range of anywhere from 60 degrees to 85 degrees. Um, so a lot of what we do with open water training, it's usually just a pre-competition before our major competitions like World Championships. It's about acclimating them to the conditions. The other aspect is just getting them used to swimming without the walls. And when they're swimming in a long course meter pool, they're getting that break every 30 seconds or so. They're still working hard, they're still doing flip turns, but they're not actually taking strokes during that time. So the goal is to keep them swimming for long durations without having those kind of natural breaks from their stroke count that's going on in a pool. The hardest training we do, oh man, I mean, most of these are pretty tough. You know, a couple times a week, we'll do a lot of yardage, so we'll do like a 9K or 10K workout, and the main set will be like an hour of swimming with very little rest. Today was long course. So we were doing like a descending set, four 200, six 150s, eight ones, 10 50s. 
it's nice to start at the longer distances and kind of work your way down and work on some speed at the end. Out in 41 high, what are you doing, dude? Set yourself up so you at least have a chance. There's some other components to doing open water that are definitely different from doing pool racing, but it's not this completely different sport that's out there. It's just a different event. And if I'm looking at it from a spectator's point of view, it's a lot more exciting to see these guys go at it. What makes it exciting is there's more to what you think is going on in, in each particular race. If an athlete's sitting in seventh place, it's usually by design. The 10K race is, might be a two hour race, but a lot of times it comes down to the, the tenth or the hundredth of the second. The podium spots are always up for grabs within, in the final 400 meters or even in the final what we call the finish shoot, which is the final 25 meters of a race. The start of a more race is pretty hectic. You're not really paying attention. You can just end up being run over by like 30 people. So you just got to find your rhythm and make sure you know, you're not getting trampled with and slam over. I like to wait till everyone goes and then I'll go. I use that first bit to warm up and relax because we have two hours. I'm not going to stress myself out beforehand. On race day, they have uh, like a feeding dock where they hand out gels and drink mixes that you make. Doesn't taste very good, but it helps you finish the race. This is going to be a really interesting feed, so if you're up here on the shore, keep an eye on this. It's super easy to like have someone come up and knock your feet out of your hands, so you just got to you know, be patient and make sure you're focusing on getting the feet. An open water race is kind of like a roller coaster ride. You'll feel great one minute and then your stroke or you get tired or something happens. That's when you always question your sanity and why you chose to do this. I would say that to the normal bystander, uh, they might look at the open water athletes as having a couple screws loose, because why would you want to swim for two hours? But I think there's a lot of respect from the elite athletes in the pool, and there's a lot of respect from them towards these open water athletes and what they have to go through to, in order to be successful in open water. Ho! Oh, open water swimmers, let me tell you. They live just outside the norm of pain and suffering that is normal swimming. True story, I was roommates with Jordan at the Olympics and just a few weeks before the Olympics we woke up one morning and we were talking about practice and Jordan was like, yeah I'm just gonna do a ni nice 9k this morning. And I was like, what? <laughs> okay dude. Open water swimmers race a distance that is longer than what some sprinters train over the course of an entire week. That's true and it's quite impressive and kind of scary when I think about it. Damn, those guys are animals. I'm trying to think of an animal that, that like endures and grinds really hard, like a lion, like a really vicious hippo, like a shark. Getting real off topic here. It's incredibly admirable and all of the elite level pool swimmers love them and respect them for it because most of us couldn't do that. How do you train for endurance physically? I think a lot of that is done with their time that they're spending in the pool. Hours in the pool. You just have to put a lot of time in the pool, which is not the most fun thing to do some days, but you kind of have to just grind it out and make sure you're getting in the work you need to do and just putting in a lot of yards. Our athletes are swimming two hours in the morning, two hours in the afternoon, so they're taking the time and training as hard as they can for those 11 workouts a week. I'm gonna show you how to grind, show you how to shine. Mental endurance, I think I've been pretty lucky and I've always been pretty good at being focused for long periods of time or convincing myself I'm, I'm better than I actually am physically. Ready, yep. If you're gonna swim distance, you need to be able to go fast. You need to be able to have multiple gears. So you need to be able to kick, you need to be able to go at a pace that's, you know, we haven't seen before, right? 32-2, not bad. Three qualities open water swimmer needs is a tough mind, willingness to put yourself through two hours of pain, and I'd say being able to adjust. There's a lot of things that change in open water that you can't control. Go with the flow is crucial. We're here for the Tier Pro Series in a super fast pool with lots of fast swimming. From sand pipers of Nevada.